Hello everybody, this is Minecraft Alex here, and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Waterworld Super Flat Survival. And this is episode 2 of my series. Now, in the last episode, we have done the very, very difficult and lengthy task of actually getting on top of here. And this may seem like it's easy to swim from the bottom of this huge ocean to the top. It was quite difficult, and if you watched my previous episode, you know that already too well. And, amazingly, we can see the beautiful sun peeking over the horizon. Although we can't actually see it peeking over the horizon, we can just see it peeking over the bottom of the ocean there, so... I'm glad that the sun is rising and the moon is going down, but uh, since we are playing a water world super flat survival series, uh, the if it's nighttime or daytime, it does not matter too much. Although I would say that it's much easier to see what's underwater and basically to look around and see what's in these villages when it's um, daytime than nighttime. But um, nevertheless, I'm glad it's becoming daytime. But for the most part, when it's nighttime and daytime, mobs pretty much spawn all the time. Because even during daytime, it's too dark underwater here because it's just too deep. So sometimes even when it's midday, mobs spawn down there all the time so now let's start our slow descent down here and just a note of warning is that um if we mess up this operation and we somehow die then we're going to respawn somewhere around here and hopefully we're going to respawn somewhat close to the village um because well if we don't then we're gonna do ha we're gonna have to do that thing all over again or just somehow mine down here and underwater into here now we can already see some zombies spawning so we gotta be vigilant of that gotta be especially careful trying not to um like fall down oh my god we already attracted the attention of um an enderman so let's see let's just try to avoid them right there now let's see is there is there a zombie over there? Now let's see. Now we have few health, but the only way for us to completely secure us from having to uh, respawn once more is to possibly make a bed. And yeah, this is going to be much harder than I thought it's going to be. So Now what I really need now, I just realized, is that I probably need to go down and collect some food. And now, as you can see, I don't see too many mobs there, so let me just break this piece of wood here. Hopefully, we can... And we already died. So, yep, that's that. Hmm. Now, let's see. Now, we are just respawned on the same location here. Now, let me just die, and hopefully, we're going to be able to get up. So now what I think I'm going to do now is my next plan of action will be to get out of here once more. We're quite lucky that we spawn on the same location because we're going to be able to use the same pipe that we used before to get up. So I don't think it's too much of an issue. It's just a bit of a nuisance. So we're just going to have to do that process all over again. Let's just hope that we're going to make it once more because, I mean, it was kind of a close call. We almost didn't make it that one time, so... Um, anyway, what I think I'm going to do is when I descend down there, I'm going to make some food. I'm going to chop down some... Um, I didn't mean to fall down there. I mean, it was it was a big fail for me to fall down there. And I think it really sucked, but um, nevertheless, I, I died. And um, I'm kind of disappointed I did die because I really thought that I wouldn't have to deal with this anymore. But apparently, hardcore Minecraft uh, calls for hardcore play. So, I guess, you know, anything could happen. And when you're playing such a difficult map in Minecraft, and I'm putting so much difficult standards onto me. Because, I mean, I could have cheated, or I could have spawned in a torch. Or I could have just used the seed to mitigate the issue of having to be able to go up and down without any access to anything other than just simple dirt blocks. But I just decided to go for a random seed and see what happens. So, I just like the challenge in Minecraft. Like I said in uh, the previous episode, I think that one of the basically goals of Minecraft, at least the way I see Minecraft, is that Minecraft is basically a thing 
where uh, is basically a game where you complete challenging tasks, and when you complete these challenging tasks, and when you work very very hard to complete those challenging tasks, you feel rewarded when you complete those tasks because you worked hard to complete them. Well, that's pretty much my opinion on basically what Minecraft is, and basically what kind of game it is, and basically what's the purpose of Minecraft. I mean, like I said, I don't want to force anyone's, um, I don't want to force my opinion on anybody, so I'm not going to say, oh, this is the proper purpose of Minecraft, or, like, this is not the proper purpose of Minecraft or anything. I'm not going to say that, so, um, that's what I think, but anyway, let's just hope that we're going to be able to reach the surface before, um, we, like, run out of air, so, yep, let's see, it's about 80 feet, so I think we should make it, there we go, and, of course, we don't make it, so what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to, uh, I actually don't even know why we did not make it, that's, we really should have made that, that time, so, let's just go underneath here, and hopefully let's just collect some more resources, Let's just collect some more wood, uh, I mean not wood, but um, let's just collect some more dirt, and what I'm going to do that is I'm going to expand my tube so that it goes a bit higher, because if it had gone a few blocks higher, then I probably would have survived, so that is really disappointing, and that I have to do the whole thing over again, but now I'm going to have to have a solid plan of action. When I do reach the, oh let's see, is it hard mode? Oh. Yeah, I just had to make sure that it's on hard mode. No wonder I died so fast from the zombies. Anyway, my firm plan of action is that I'm going to find a plot, uh, a farm plot with no mobs on it. Then I'm going to mine off some, some of the wood, oak wood blocks there. Then I'm going to craft a crafting table, then out of wood, out of the same, I'm going to collect some more wood, and then I'm going to craft a pickaxe, a shovel, a sword, just basic things. I'm just going to craft some more of that good stuff. Um, and then when I have that in motion, then what I'm going to have, to, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably go underground once more, then I'm going to mine some stone. And by the way, if you go deeper from here, if you go deeper than the dirt right here, there is like three layers of stone, but the stone does not contain any ore, so pretty much all you have here is stone. That is nice because you don't have to rely on a cobblestone generator, you could just go underground to collect stone, which is at the same time better, and at the same time it's a bit worse than having to deal with uh, the standard vanilla superfly, because in the standard vanilla superfly, if you remember, if you watched my episode, you remember that I have to... I'm gonna die right now. Um, you remember that uh, I remember very well how I had to basically create cobblestone from cobblestone generators, and I pretty much built my whole base using cobblestone that was created just purely using cobblestone generators. So I guess at the same time, having... Um, access to underground oh, let's just die here I guess that at the same time having access to underground uh, stone is is good but at the same time it's not really good because if you think about it uh, it's very difficult to get underground here because in this let's play at least it's very very hard to get underground because just how um, how this map works you have to go through 90 blocks of water before you can get underground. And if you try to use those little, like, if you try to use villages to go up and down, there's, like, tons of mobs there. So, I mean, like, as you see, I just got killed by a zombie there. So, uh, that was purely my fault, and I'll try to avoid that further. And, and I mean, there's a really, like, crap ton of mobs spawning there just because um, all of the spawns in the area go to just one of the few of these locations. So, like... Uh, mob spawning rates are crazy, and at the same time, this is very great for mob grinders and such, because mob grinders allow you to, basically, mob grinders in, in, wor in worlds like Skyblock, and in worlds like, um, and in worlds like this world, um, has very very high spawn rates for mob grinders so even the most rudimentary mob grinders are very very efficient in this world i have not actually ever built a mob grinder in this type of uh, ocean world 
but I want to do it in this episode, definitely. And I think that's going to be one of our first goals, is to build a good mob grinder, because that's how we're going to be able to collect all those resources and mob drops that we need, say, for example, like, bone meal for for our automated bone meal, and, and obviously you're going to need witches for redstone and glowstone and all that good stuff, and obviously string for... Uh, we're going to need string for for wool and um for like and obviously we're gonna need uh arrows for like for uh, our bows so yeah and this is another perk that this map has compared to the uh this is another perk that this map uh, i mean i mean this is another perk that this world has compared to the vanilla super flat survival and the reason for that is because in the vanilla flat survival you basically have lots of mobs spawning in the vanilla super flat survival you basically have a bunch of like mobs spawning um during nighttime on the ground and since it's flat and there's no caves there's just a bunch of mobs and slimes so at the nighttime there's always like mobs running around and during the daytime there's always slimes running around so um j and jumping around so but this world there's no slime so that's a large relief because i really do hate slimes they were very very annoying to me in the vanilla super flat survival and i think that's a perk for this world considering that this world does not have slimes which is great but at the same time what sucks is that uh it's very very difficult to get up and down and everything is covered with water and it makes playing this world very very difficult as you can see wow it's beautiful out there yeah, I went to that village, I remember, so. And like I said before, another thing that's uh, not really good is that um, all of the spawns go to the villages, so it's very, it's much more difficult to explore villages in this world than in um, the standard vanilla super flat survival. Although actually, I, I think it's it might be even easier to explore villages in this world. And the reason for that is because basically in this world you can ride boats and boats are much faster than running and you don't have to deal with slimes and everything but in the sense of transporting villagers and in the sense of going around villages i think that it's much harder in this world in this preset than in the original preset that i was playing so yeah and another thing that i think is that um another plus and minus side is that uh since mobs here can only spawn in villages mob grinders have very good rates both daytime and nighttime but for the original super flat survival this uh the mob grinders only have good rates they have like tons of mobs falling down only during the daytime during the daytime mobs can't spawn uh, like and during the daytime mobs can't spawn on the vanilla super flat survival and the vanilla super flat preset so like I said, that's where where you have the two blocks of um oh it's nighttime. That's not good. I'm talking about when you have like two uh when you have uh one block of grass on uh top and two blocks of dirt on the bottom and then another block of bedrock down there. So that's what I think. Is that in that that's what I mean when I'm saying vanilla super flat. That's what I'm talking about. That's the vanilla super flat that I mean. And basically, in that world, I believe that it's much... Um, in that world, the mob grinders are much less efficient. And that's kind of a, a negative part of that. In this world, um, as long as you build a mob grinder far away from a village, and even if you do build it close to a village, your rates are usually going to be much, much better than in the vanilla super flat. Another thing is that like I said before, you you really don't have to deal with this much slimes like you do in this uh, in um, super flat, the vanilla super flat. Oh, let's drown this dude. Um, so basically, what I think is that I don't want to repeat myself. I, I think I'm repeating myself too much. But anyway, I think that um, in the world. So let's see. Can we go down here now? I'm sorry, I'm kind of changing subjects a bit quickly, but let's just craft something very, very quickly. Now we crafted a crafting table. Now let's craft uh, very, very quickly to make sure that the mobs don't catch up to us. And I'll just craft uh, a sword very quickly. I mean, although rudimentary will help protect us against the mobs. Now let's see. 
I can't see any more of them down there. So now let's see. Now let's just try to make a pickaxe. So let's that's just where the rest of our wood's gonna go. Uh, now let me just collect my. Um, oh, actually, if I break that, the water's gonna flood in here. I remember because I actually used to play this uh, super flat preset when I was on my own. I actually. Despite what many of you think, I actually played this preset many, many times before. And by that, I mean I have played this type of Minecraft world before many, many times. Uh, and I'm talking about on my own. Actually, even before I had a YouTube channel, I played this type of uh, Super Flat Survival for a long time. And that's the reason why I decided to make videos about it, is because I'm thinking, well, I played this world so many times in... Uh, off camera, so I mean, I should probably start playing this uh, on camera as well. Might be good for my channel. So, yeah, that's that was my reasoning to why I decided to create this let's play. So now let's see if we break this. Oh, it's probably gonna flood in. So I'm just going. I'm just going to break the the wood blocks that are the. Um, least likely to flood the whole place in and another thing these basically like air canopies underwater are very very glitchy and if you disrupt them like say for example if i break like even if i break this uh, even if i place a block here and then i break this block say like i break um i mean the the crafting table then the wa actually it's going to glitch out and the water's going to start flooding in here and i don't like it flooding in here so i'll try to prevent it from flooding as much as i can but i mean of course if i do need wood i'm just going to mine this whole thing out but then of course for that i'll need torches and torches serve a m very important purpose in this let's play uh, well they not only light areas up they also allow us to um, basically have oxygen in areas I mean air basically like breathable air in areas that don't have it and it's very counterintuitive because if you think about it in real life that's pretty much the opposite in Minecraft because in real life when you have torches burning they only eat up oxygen but apparently in Minecraft torches give you air for, for a few seconds seconds but the few seconds that the torch displaces the let's see if we mine further down here is it going to disrupt it um hmm wow it's, it's taking a long time yeah i think i think that we're gonna go out here just because i don't want to because if i start breaking this block um this uh wall of sand then it might collapse in so we'll just go down here so I'm just trying to reach the area where we have stone, and when I reach the stone area, I'm basically going to mine some stone. And the reason why I need stone is not only for uh, building, I also need stone to craft furnaces, because I need torches. That's going to be my first... Um, basically my first goal because I'm tired of always mining underground without the access to torches and torches are very efficient because they prevent mobs from spawning and I really don't want mobs to spawn oh looks like we hit uh looks like we hit the stone the cobbles the stone right here so let's just break this right here and then from now on we're going to mine stone we're going to mine down here there we go. Let's just mine one block down further, just in case. And this is going to be our stone mine for a while. Now, like I said before, this doesn't have any ores or anything like that, so pretty much all we have here is just stone. And as much as you think that's useless, this is actually quite useful because in, say, vanilla super flat survival, we had to get iron to get buckets. Or we had to find buckets in, um in blacksmith chests and villages or we had to find iron in uh, blacksmith chests so that we were we would be able to craft buckets out of that and because we needed to to make a cobblestone generator we needed buckets and to get buckets we needed iron or we needed just buckets and the only way to do that was to basically uh, the only way to do that oh I think we have enough the only way to do that was to basically get uh, buckets and the only way to get buckets was to go around villages searching f searching the blacksmith chests for either buckets or for either um, or for either iron or both whichever you find first um, the buckets preferably but you did need at least one bucket in uh, super flat in vanilla super flat survival in order just to get stone but as you can see at the same time we're kind of um, Let's see, maybe you could use my wooden pickaxe. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably just going to use my wooden pickaxe fuel for now. So, yeah. Wow, finally. So beautiful. 
there's finally a light source. Now, as you can see, for some reason... Oh, we only got one charcoal. Let's see, so just fuel it a bit further. Let me just make some four uh, oak wood planks. So we're just going to get a few more of that, and hopefully we're going to have enough wood. And uh, we do have quite an abundancy of wood here. And obviously another thing is that it's kind of difficult to collect wood in this world, just because if you think about it, wood... Oh, finally, torches. Because if you think about it, uh, wood in... Uh, Wood, like in the regular super flat survival, you're able to collect wood without having to disturb the whole system. So let's see. I'm talking about disturbing the system as in like... As in like, for example, if I actually place a torch here and then like I break the torch, then I... Like all the water will flood in here, so yeah. And also another thing is that... It's much easier to collect wood in this type of world rather than in um, the vanilla super flat because uh, no, actually, I think no, I think the opposite. I think that in the vanilla super flat survival, it's much easier to collect wood in that world rather than in this world. And the reason for me thinking that is because in the world uh, such as in the vanilla super flat world, you can just collect the wood and then you're not going to have to worry about the water flooding in. You're not going to have to worry about suffocating and you're not going to have to worry about having like mobs fall down or like fall down upon you. I mean, of course, uh, vanilla super flat survival did have its difficulties. And one of the biggest difficulties of vanilla super flat survival, in my opinion, was the fact that... Um, was the fact that uh, when you tried to collect wood or pretty much any resource in villages, you basically was like you were swarmed, you were completely swarmed by huge, huge slimes that always tried to like be around you, and that ouch, and that was very difficult to get through. So that basically, let's see, let's just put some torches here. Oh, we're gonna have to go and grab the rest of the charcoal that we got there. Oh, let's see. So we got three. That's not bad. That's gonna ha be enough for for a while, but uh, of course we're gonna have to get we're gonna have to m make more in the future. Of course, when we build our base, especially that's when I'm going to have to have the most resources when we start building up our base. So yeah. So let's see. I think this is enough light here. Yeah, I, I do think. Although I don't know. Let's just just to be safe. I'm just gonna put uh, another torch here. So or something like this. Yeah. Actually, something like this, because in the future, when I might mine out more of this stuff here, I might have to mine this out, so I don't like placing torches on the walls here, because I'm just going to have to replace it, so that, I like just to place them on the ground, that's more efficient, so, yeah. Now we have eight torches, now let's light up the rest of this area here, and for this time being, this is going to be our base area here, this is going to be our base of operations. Now, one thing I've been thinking about is we can possibly... We might possibly surround this with cobblestone walls, or maybe with just dirt, I don't know. Uh, it's it, it, it's quite possible, although on the other hand, I do not want to waste cobblestone, so I don't know, it really depends. But in the long run, I think that we're going to be actually making... Yeah, there we go, now everything's lit up. I think that in the long run, we're going to be making our base on the surface, because on the surface, that's where it's much easier to build, like, mob grinders and stuff. And the reason for that is because, I mean, it's kind of difficult to build mob grinders, or it's difficult to build anything underwater. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have, like, I'm going to build a huge platform on top of the water, much like Skyblock. I'm going to have to build a platform to build my base on. Except the fact that if you fall down, you just fall into water, and you could just get back up instead of having to fall down into the void. So, yeah. But in that sense, uh, yeah, let's see. Let me just. I don't know if I should cover these, like, water, this, like, water sources here. I don't know. At the same time, there's enough water, but at the same time, what if I want to farm? I mean, if you think about it, it's going to be efficient. Like, if I want to farm, I could just make a small farm here and just plant some carrots. I mean, in reality, I, I do think I should start farming because I probably won't have enough food in, um, in a while, so that. I like crafting hoes because it doesn't take much. I really shouldn't have stopped the whole thing out because that way it's kind of inefficient. But, uh, whatever. Because I really don't want to be depleting my food sources. I think that I'm going to replant uh, carrots. So, let's see. 
Uh, I'm going to re replant only as much as carrots, like right as much as uh, this much, and hopefully they're going to grow fast. Now I'm going to go around and try to raid more and more um, farm fields, but uh, that comes at great risk because, like we know, if I do eventually die, what's going to happen? Well, I mean, I will eventually die somewhat in this last play, but I mean, before I make a bed or before I save my spawn point and say I die, say like right now I go out and I try to collect more food and then I get like blown up by a creeper or something that I didn't see in the darkness, that's going to be very bad because I'm going to spawn once more over there and I'm going to lose all my uh, all my items that I collected and then we're going to be back to zero again. Which is going to be really, really bad. So in that sense, I really don't know what sh which you, what sh we should do. And I can already hear some uh, some Endermen getting triggered at me. So that's it's not something that's good. So yeah, I think this episode has been long enough. Uh, I think that we should. Um, I'm not going to be making. Let's see. Should I kill it? Are there zombies there? Yeah, there are zombies there. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to basically open the door right here. The zombies are going to come out, and when they're going to come out, see, he's going to go up there. So then after that, what's going to happen is he's just going to float up there, and eventually he's going to suffocate and die. So that's the easiest way to eradicate them. Is there a zombie there? Oh, no, there's no zombies there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically collect some uh, of the wood right here. Now it's probably going to take a long time just because I'm... I'm floating, and I think the easiest way to be probably is to just go up here and then just collect it, like, right over here, so yeah. Oh, there we go, collected that. And so, um, I think I'm gonna do quite a bit of off-camera work. There's not really gonna be much interesting what I'm going to be doing now, since I'm probably mostly what I'm gonna be doing is I'm mostly gonna be trying to collect wood. I'm probably going to be trying to, um... I'm going to be collecting cobblestone, I'm going to be collecting uh, dirt, I'm going to be mining, I'm going to be uh, finding new villages. And also, by the way, yeah, there is a new, there is another village somewhere up here close. Like, if I go back to that spot over there, I think there's a village somewhere over there very close. I remember that, yeah. But actually, before I finish the episode, I think we should go and try to find more... Um, I think we should go and try to find some wool blocks because we need to craft a bed. That's a very important thing. I think one of my highest priorities right now is to craft a good bed. And actually, not a good bed. I need to craft any bed because in Minecraft, there's only one type of bed. So I'm just going to craft a bed. And after that, I'm going to save my spawn point, preferably somewhere there. And I actually thought about making my base underground. And it actually does make a lot of sense, because if you think about it, making the base underground is probably the most secure thing that you can do, because if I'm, um... I, I said that I might encase this area with a cobblestone wall, but then I realized that this would cost way too much cobblestone and way too many resources, so it's just much more efficient to do something else, not cover it in cobblestone. Uh, and believe me, from time to time, uh, mobs like Enderman can spawn in there, or like... Uh, creepers, or like as you can see, the zombies who are floating around, any zombies or any mobs, or like a, a skeleton is floating, they could start shooting at me from there. It's not a very secure place to be because I could be shot on, I could be like, um, a zombie could show up there or something like that. Since it doesn't have any walls or anything, that's what I think I'm gonna do is I think the best way to do that, uh, to get protection is to basically create an underground base. And I'm talking about like the underground base, like the area that I just mined cobblestone out of. That would make a really, really great base. And another thing I think I should do is I think I should probably make an axe so I could collect wood easier. So, you know, let's see how much wood we got. I've been thinking about creating a chest, maybe just in case to dump. Oh, we got some rotten flesh. That's not bad. So I think that we should also possibly make a chest just so we can drop all our stuff in there. Now, I'm going to make sure to put the chest somewhere right here just so it wouldn't be exposed. Maybe even maybe even somewhere underground there, but I don't know. That's going to be difficult to access the chest. So I'm probably going to put it somewhere up here. So. so I'll just make a real quick chest right here. There we go. Plop that down somewhere right here. Um, let me place all of my most important uh, resources right there, pretty much everything I have. Well, I think that I'm going to leave my dirt. I'm going to put my hoe. I don't need my hoe. Uh, I think I'm just going to have some dirt on me, and I'm just going to leave. I actually think I'm going to need some food. I'm just going to take some rotten flesh. Um, and I'm, 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 and also, I might. what I might do is I might craft uh, just one bread, just in case. So. And get the little achievement, which is cool. So, yeah. That's going to be our food. And then now we're going to go and try to search for, uh, try to get, 
um, some uh, wool for us to be able to build. Uh, is there any mobs there? Well, that's kind of scary. Wait, is someone shooting at me? This is a very difficult hardcore let's play because, in the sense, if we die, then it's gonna be back to z to uh, ground zero, which really sucks. So let's just uh, collect all that there. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, thankfully the spider's not gonna touch us. There we go. So now let's see. Okay, now I see some skeletons fired at me over there. Now let's see. Are there any mobs there? Nope. So let's just go down here. Uh, let's see where. Oh no, no. Yeah, I think we should we should really get a bow and arrow sometime soon. But obviously, I don't have enough resources for that. Wow, it's a pretty large village. So now my first order of business would be to go right here and uh, destroy this. Um, destroy this wall post right here. Now let's escape this before we get shot to death. Oh, missed me. Oh, there we go. We already killed... We already got some arrows and we got some bones. So we could just use those bones for, like, um... Bone mealing our, uh... Bone mealing some of our crops. Now, and another really cool thing is that... From time to time, when, uh... When the mobs... Oh, there's a blacksmith. I should definitely go check what's in their chest. And there's also an Enderman somewhere there. Oh, wow. What just happened here? Wait, what? What? There's a mine shaft in there. Oh, my God. A mine shaft spawned on the bottom here, and it connected up here. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And this is the reason also why I added some mine shafts into this world, is just because it would be so more, much more interesting to collect resources and go around just because they add a lot to Minecraft. And like I said before, another thing that's cool with this uh, world is that uh, when the mobs, like when the mobs go out, like they just start going up because they like the mob AI works the way that when they're in water, they start going upwards. And um, that helps a lot because the mobs, when they go into the water, they basically just start automatically going up, and then they eventually suffocate, and their drops fall down. So then after that, I can just collect free drops like I just did with the arrow and the bone and everything. So now we're going to be able to uh, raid that mine shaft over there. Hopefully they might have some resources over there. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I actually think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, re a real quick uh, crafting table somewhere right here, and place a crafting table somewhere right here, and that instantly turned into dirt from... Uh, from farm field, uh, from farmland, so right now what I'm pro probably gonna do, I'm probably gonna craft some, uh, oh, but we don't have any, we don't have any, like, yeah, unfortunately we don't have any, um, what's it called, uh, cobblestone, yeah, we don't have any of that. So now it looks like this kind of got, uh, cut off by, um, by all of the other s villages spawning. Now let's see, there's some tracks right here, there's some spider web, oh, this is what we can do, we can break this. Yeah, I didn't really think this through very well, did I? So basically, my idea was to basically, um, cut all of the strings using my sword, so that I'd be able to basically collect string and then out of the string I could collect things like um so that out of the string I could collect things like for example um so out of the string I could craft things like um wool and then out of the wool I could like um and out of the wool I could craft beds and stuff like that and I desperately need either string or either wool like we know because that's one of my most needed priorities is to create a bed but this is also one of my most dangerous priorities because the more I try to get wool and the more I try to get string the bigger the possibility of me dying so uh, that's that's really great so uh, well at least we know that there's a mine shaft there that's gonna have to be explored later I just leave that um Actually, no, I think I'll take the crafting table with me. I, I might need it somewhere sometime in the future when I'm going around, so... 
Well, we didn't even collect this, so let's just collect this one right here. Okay, so where'd that go? Uh-oh. Let's just try to avoid that. Okay. We collected some of that. Ouch. Shooting me all the time. Let me just collect the stuff. So what I just collected is a black piece of black wool. So let's hope that we're going to be able to... Uh, Another thing that I want to go is I want to go and look if there's anything in the in the blacksmith over there. I don't think there's going to be too many things, but uh, I just hope there's no mobs. Oh, thank God. I'm so happy there's no mobs. Let's just light all of this up just in case. Wow. There's, we find, we found an oak sapling. Wow. We found some tree. We, uh, I mean, we found some bread. That's so useful. We didn't even have to craft a chest because there's already one here. Now, I actually thought that one of the hardest parts for this Let's Play would be to find oak saplings because I would have to be able to... I would have to go around several villages searching for blacksmiths and then inside those blacksmiths I would try to find oak saplings and like we know from my previous let's plays and many minecrafters know that not all blacksmiths chests have oak saplings and furthermore not all villages have blacksmiths so if we find some oak saplings and especially seven oak saplings which is a very large number I think um, because there were two stacks of oak saplings, like, there was, like, three here and, like, four here or something like that. That's very rare, and I think that we're very, very lucky that happened. I mean, obviously, we weren't very lucky considering when, um, considering that, uh, we died and we got shot up that one time. Oh, no. No. Oh, well, thankfully, he's not a threat anymore, so... As you can see, he's going up there now, so we'll try to not to engage in combat with any mobs anytime soon before we can get um, a good spawn point set, so that's that. Uh, and let's just go back to our little mini base and uh, plop down all of our resources that we currently connected, collected. Oh, oh and, we, and as you can see, some bones fell down on us because some uh, some skeleton died up there or something, so... So now we can make this chest into a double chest just for uh, fun, just because we have more chests. So let's just um, place that all in right here. Uh, we did get quite a bit of seeds there. We, we got much more carrots, which is great. We got more wheat. Let's just place down some carrots right here, just in case. We got some more potatoes. We got some more planks. We got some more mob drops. We got some more sand. We got a crafting table, we crafted that. Of course, we crafted black wool. And, of course, my most prized possession currently is my oak saplings. My iron leggings, of course. Uh, gold ingot. Bread. Uh, I could just put that right here. And just this one lonely rail, so... Yeah, I don't think we are doing too bad. We have done many, many cool things recently, so I think that we are on our way to have a very, very nice base. Sooner or later, we're going to build a really cool base, and we're going to build large mob grinders. We're going to build large redstone machines. Oh, let me take that. Got some two more arrows there. Arrows are always useful. We might need them sometime. Um... So yeah, soon we're going to have a large base, soon we're going to have some mob grinders, hopefully soon we're going to have a lot of really, really cool stuff, so yeah. And, and on that note, I'm going to be ending the episode, uh, so yeah, thank you for watching, this is Minecralix, and uh, see you all in the next episode.